First off, we want to welcome Greg Roman uh, into the program. We know he's very busy getting his uh, Buffalo Bills ready for the Philadelphia Eagles. But, Greg, it's always a pleasure to have you take out some time here on 97.3. Welcome back. Hey, thanks. How's it going? Everything's good, man, and uh, everybody's been asking about you. You know, with your team coming into town, I'm sure you got ticket requests and people knocking down your door to try to get in uh, touch with you. But um, first off, uh, this has got to be an interesting week for you and the Bills. It seems like every team is kind of just jumbled in that AFC wildcard race. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think we've uh, managed to cut to the chase and realize that, it, you know, every week from here on out is going to be the same for us, you know. We got to uh, really focus on ourselves. Focus on keep making uh, strides, and uh, you know the, we'll look, you know, get to the end and see where the chi- let the chips fall where they may. But you know, it's uh, way too early to start looking at uh, you know what's going on with other teams. But uh, we're gonna have our hands full this week with a very good Eagles team. Obviously, going up to New England and being able to win that game up there is uh, quite you know quite an achievement. So. Um, we know they've that's probably injected some new life into them and um you know so deep into the preparation process yeah and i told you the other day when we had uh sent a couple text messages i said chip mentioned you the other day and he really was praising you as a play caller uh and your dedication to running the football and uh you know that's something that i think a lot of offensive coordinators want to do or get away from sometimes in today's nfl where you just want to throw 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 uh but how is having a back like LaShawn McCoy really made you want to emphasize on the run game. Yeah, I think I think you hit it on the head, Mike. Uh, you know, I, I, I've been blessed with with some really really good running backs and um, you know some good offensive linemen and uh, all that good stuff. So I think uh, when you can when when you have the tools to do it, uh, you certainly want to use those tools. And you know, LaShawn is just a dynamic guy. He's everything we thought he'd be. Um, early in the year, you know, wasn't quite healthy, and uh, we had a, fought, fought a lot of little injuries this year, at a lot of positions, and uh, I feel like we're getting into a groove now, and uh, really with the O line, quarterbacks, receivers getting chemistry, uh, Lashawn getting a feel for things, and uh, you know, I mean, the sky's the limit. Obviously, he's a very, very special player, and uh, hopefully, we can uh, utilize him to his fullest. Do you see a little twinkle in his eye this week? I mean, it's inevitable uh, that when you play your former team, but this one seems a little different because obviously, you know, he said some things on the way out the door, and uh, I don't know that he wanted to be treated. I think it was a little bit of a surprise for him. I'm sure he's settled in nicely now, but uh, do you see a little twinkle, a little extra pep in his step this week? Oh, I think for sure. I mean, you know, he's a Pennsylvania guy, played his whole career there, and uh, anybody that's going back, home or whatever uh, you know it's always extra special so uh, no matter what anybody says but at the same time he's just, you know he's his normal self this week pretty dialed in very glued in to uh, you know our plan of attack this week and uh, really trying to pick that stuff up really dialed in though uh, you're getting a chance to come home too he's coming back you know uh, when you were back here with San Francisco it was only neat but uh, is this a little different dynamic uh, being here with the Bills no, it's all the same. You know, uh, I think coming back to Philly is always special. Uh, man, I remember the last time. We, uh, I think I can't even remember. I think it was the last time I was there. Uh, we were down twenty-one to three at half, and uh, came back and won the game. And uh, that that was a real special day for our team. Last time I was there, but uh, you know, very passionate fan base. Obviously, hey, I grew up an Eagles fan, so of course it's special to me. Uh, you know. Um, I used to sit sit up in the 700 level of the vet, and uh, with all the other with the all the with all the other ones with all the other crazy people, you know. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, hey, it's uh, always special to come back there, and uh, we know we got a, a tough task. I think Philadelphia's uh, a very tough team, very uh, very uh, fast, explosive defense that uh, really really play hard. Greg Roman's with us, uh, of course, Holy Spirit, uh, and uh, he was with the 49ers and now in Buffalo. How has changing from San Francisco and playing for Jim, an intense guy, and now going to Buffalo and playing for Rex, uh, I guess an intense guy as well, uh, how has that changed your job? I mean, with the personnel, have you 
you know, with the different personnel, have you had to change your play calling or tweak your offense based on your personnel a bit? Oh, you know, definitely. I'm always going to use utilize whatever personnel I have available that week. And th- this week, this year, quite frankly, I mean, we've gone through stretches where our personnel has changed drastically uh, week to week. So we've looked a lot different different weeks of this season. And uh, um, I'm always going to do that anyway. You know, the playbook is uh, – there is no playbook. The playbook uh, is invisible, and it, it changes week to week. And uh, always going to try to do things that uh, emphasize our players' strengths and their weaknesses. And, you know, I've got a guy like Sammy Watkins who uh, – you know the sky is the limit for this guy. I mean, he he has uh, ability like I've never seen before, been around before. And uh, you know, with Lashawn and Clay, and then our offensive line, and Tyrod, you de- you definitely have. And then uh, I like our other receivers too. You know, Hogan and Woods, and uh, just to name a few. But uh, uh, it's definitely a different skill set. But uh, I think we definitely want to. Uh, be able to control the line of scrimmage and uh, let everything trickle down from there. Hey, Greg, you know, last week the Eagles, you know, you, they'd been struggling. They gave up 90 uh, in a four-day games, uh, four day span, and then last week, um, you know, they played much better. The, the special teams got involved. But, man, when you're as the coordinator watching the film and seeing Fletcher Cox and what he did last week, uh, is I always ask in the NFL, does the defense have a player that you have to game plan for? And I don't know that the Eagles have had that defensive game plan player, but is he becoming a guy where you might have to game plan for what he does? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I think he's definitely establishing himself as that kind of player. Um, you know, you better, you better be careful about the one-on-one matchups with him. And, uh, you know, thankfully for us, we got a right, a left guard that, um, I have all the faith in the world in, and Richie Incognito. This guy is playing as good, if not better, than any guard in the NFL. So it's going to be a good matchup, a tough matchup, two, two guys at the top of their game going at it. And, uh, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure it'll be something, it'll, it'll be, you know, a battle within the battle. Um, but, um, you know, looking at their win over New England, uh, what a great team win. And I know yeah. what that's like because we played them last year in San Fran, and I think they had, might have had one first down through like three quarters or something like that. And they were winning 21 17 or something going into the fourth quarter. One of the most bizarre games I've ever been around. But they had, I think, three non offensive touchdowns. So, uh, you know, they really got got that aspect of their game going. Uh, obviously, you made the change from San Francisco to Buffalo, and uh, the last year, um, you know, getting involved in entrenching in, in yourself in a new spot here. Um, just kind of as a NFL question, Greg, uh, how is it bouncing around from team to team and n- new players and new coaches? How did you get hooked up with Rex uh, to, to end up in Buffalo? I think that's always a kind of a thing that people get lost. Like this guy just goes from Baltimore. You were in what Carolina, Baltimore. San Francisco, like Houston. the yeah, the myriad of towns that you guys end up in, and how mm-hmm. you kind of connect the dots with uh, to end up in Buffalo with Rex Ryan. You know, I had a lot of options. Uh, I was very fortunate, and uh, you know, I'd worked with Rex in Baltimore and really grew to admire him and uh, what how he did things and his skill as a coach. So, um, you know, once I met the owners here at the Pagulas, it uh, it was uh, an e- really an easy decision. Um, and I'll tell you what, the, the number one thing is this, Mike. It's, uh, it's all about your family. And in my case, I have my wife and three children. It's all about finding the right spot for them as well. You know, they they got to yep. change schools. My kids got to find new friends, uh, all that stuff. You know, my wife, same thing. You know, we had really good friends out there in California. Now, you know, you pick up and move. And uh, uh, one thing that's pretty cool, though, is we always get back to New Jersey, South Jersey, down the shore. Cool. Every, uh, every summer, at least once i usually get home two three times a year and uh see all my friends back there and uh you know that that never changes so uh it's pretty exciting you get to move around meet new people see new places experience new communities and all that and uh buffalo is a very special community and uh we're really proud to be here 
Yeah, it's uh, it's a very college-like atmosphere up there, one of the great NFL towns. You took a little bit of a hit in the weather department, I'm sure, but uh, the food up there not is probably right now, pretty good. Not. Don't jinx us. No. Not right now. It's beautiful here. <laughs> no, you're, like you're looking to get good weather. You're you're looking at good weather when you come here, um, and it's it's very unique, I think, what is going on here, where we had Frank Vogel on last week. Here's a guy from Wildwood coaching in the NBA. Uh, you're yourself getting a chance to talk to you, coaching in the NFL, um, but and both of you seem that you always come back and kind of, I'm sure you kind of had your eye on uh, A.J. Russo's Holy Spirit Spartans uh, as they made their little, uh, you know, his first year as a head coach. I'm sure that you probably keep your eye on that in, in all you're doing as well. Always do. I always do. You bet. AJ's a good guy, a uh, good friend of mine. Great stuff. And uh, obviously, um, we want to let you run. And pr- actually, I should probably distract you more so the game plan is not too, you know too up to speed here. But I'm sure that you got. Wait a uh, second. Whose so- <laughs> side are you on anyway? <laughs> uh, it should be. Hey, I'll tell you what. After last week, uh, uh, people were turning on this team, and then you know how it is in the NFL. One win kind of solves everything for at least a week, right? That's how it works. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure Chip. I'm sure Chip's fielding some. I'm sure Chip's got tons of things he's just uh, addressing. You know, I'm sure he's having fun with all that.